we're back with another chapter for class 7. And the name of the chapter is Photosynthesis and Respiration in Plants. This is a chapter for bio. So, before we talk about photosynthesis, let's talk about autotroph and heterotrophs, or autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition. Autotrophic nutrition means, you know, organisms like plants who make their own food. Okay? Like they don't cook the food, but they make it inside the body. How they make it? In the presence of sunlight and uh, carbon dioxide and other minerals and water from the ground, they make food in the system, okay, inside the body. And those organisms are called autotrophs. And heterotrophs are the organisms which rely on autotrophs. Okay, they don't make their own food in the body. So what they do is they rely on autotrophs for food. And heterotrophs are basically animals who feed on plants. Like for us, okay, we feed on plants and we rely on plants for food. The glucose that we need in our body okay, is made by plants. So let's look at the definition of autotrophic nutri nutrition. Autotrophic nutrition is a type of nutrition where organisms prepare their own food. We've discussed. Organisms who prepare their own food are known as autotrophs, and then we've discussed. Heterotrophic nutrition are or heterotrophic nutrition is a type of nutrition where organisms cannot prepare their own food and rely on other organisms for food. These type of organisms are known as heterotrophs. Okay, so remember the words heterotrophs are the organisms which do not make their own food. Heterotrophic nutrition is a nutrition where uh, organisms, they do not make, a, make their own food but rely on autotrophs for food. Autotrophic nutrition is where the organisms make their own food and these organisms are known as autotrophs. So now let's move on to photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is basically a process where plants make their own food in the presence of sunlight, carbon dioxide and oxygen and water which they get from the ground. So let's look at the definition of photosynthesis. As discussed, photosynthesis is the process through which plants use water and carbon dioxide to create their own food, grow and release excess oxygen into the air. So this oxygen is very very vital for us. Okay? It is due to this process of photosynthesis that we get oxygen, that we breathe, which is very, very necessary for us to survive. Okay? Let's look at the chemical uh, reaction that is happening during the process of photosynthesis. This is important, so please remember this. What happens is, carbon dioxide and water, they come together in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. Okay? Chlorophyll is a substance in plants okay, that gives the green color to the plants. Okay? So these chlorophyll, this substance, what it does is it absorbs sunlight okay? and it is used to produce glucose, oxygen and water. So chemically, six parts of carbon dioxide come together with 12 parts of hydrogen in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll and gives us glucose that is C6H12O6 and gives us six uh, parts of oxygen and six parts of water. Okay, so again carbon dioxide plus water in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll gives us glucose, oxygen and water and this is photosynthesis. So what are the factors that affect photosynthesis? Like we discussed, sunlight Okay, needs to be there in presence of sunlight. Photosynthesis happens in presence of sunlight. So, light is a factor. The chlorophyll or the green pigment present in the leaves of plants helps in the absorption of sunlight. And we have discussed it before. Carbon dioxide. Leaves of plant absorb carbon dioxide from atmosphere through minute openings known as stomata. Okay, like you have this, you have learned this in the previous class, in class six, when you study leaves, that leaves have this uh, holes, tiny pores on the underside of the leaf. 
Okay? We use our nose for breathing, but plants use this pose which you can find on the underside okay, of the leaves. Temperature. Okay? It needs to be around 20 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius for optimum production of food. Okay? For photosynthesis to work perfectly, it needs to be around 20 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. Okay? Temperature is also a factor. Next is water and minerals. The root system in plants helps in the absorption of water and minerals from the soil through tubular structures called xylem. Okay? So again, we have learned this in the previous classes, the plant body. Okay? We have learned about xylem in the chapter tissues. So I'm not going to teach you what xylem is, but it is a structure which, a tubular structure in the plant body which uh, transports water and mineral the plant absorbs from soil. Okay, to the various part of the plant body. Next is respiration. Okay, what is respiration? In the easiest term to understand respiration, respiration is basically a process of taking in air, taking in oxygen and releasing carbon dioxide and between that, okay, what happens really? Let's understand that. Okay, till now we have known that respiration is basically take the air in and take the oxygen in and release the carbon dioxide. But there is a lot more process involved inside. Okay? So what are those? Respiration is the process which involves the oxidation of food, okay, this glucose, to produce water, carbon dioxide and energy. Like plant. They took uh, carbon dioxide and water and they produced food. What we do is we breathe in air, there is oxygen, and the oxygen goes down, okay, helps break our food apart so that it is easier for our body, different organs in our body, to get the nutrients and oxygen for better function. Okay, so what really happens is there is glucose, that's food, plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide water and energy. We need that energy to do the work. What is really happening is oxygen is combining with glucose, breaking the glucose apart and a body is absorbing the oxygen and the nutrients from the glucose and it gives us energy, water vapor, that is water and carbon dioxide. How does the water come out of the body? Through sweat, okay, through our urination and when we breathe out, you can feel your air to be warm. There's a presence of water vapor in there. And that's why the air is warm. Okay. The energy that is released in the body is known as adenosine triphosphate or ATP. Okay. The energy that comes out is in the form of ATP and we call it adenosine triphosphate. There are two types of respiration. One is aerobic respiration and another one is anaerobic respiration. So let's look at aerobic and anaerobic respiration. When food, that is glucose, is broken down in the presence of oxygen, it is called aerobic respiration. Okay? And when food, again glucose, is broken down in the absence of oxygen, it is called anaerobic respiration. So, in short, the food is broken in the body, okay? If the oxygen is present when the food is broken, then it is aerobic. And if there is no oxygen present when the food is bring, being broken down, then it is anaerobic respiration. Let's look at the chemical reaction, what is really happening. So what's happening is we have glucose, okay? And it combined with oxygen, gives us water, carbon dioxide, and 38 ATP. Okay, this is aerobic respiration. And for anaerobic, you just have glucose. No oxygen is present there. It gives us ethyl alcohol, carbon dioxide, and energy. 
You don't have to worry about this right now. Just remember that when, uh, when oxygen is present, when the food, when glucose is being broken down, the energy released is more. But when oxygen is not present, uh, energy release is less. This is faster than this, but this is healthier. This is not healthy. It makes us sick. This is going to make us sick. But this is healthy for a body and it gives us more energy and this gives us less energy. So, what are the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration? This is very important, okay? And you'll find this in your book, so please copy it in your notebook. So, in aerobic respiration, the glucose, the food is broken down in presence of oxygen. In anaerobic respiration, uh, the food is broken down in the absence of oxygen. Aerobic respiration occurs in plants, animals, human beings and microorganisms. Occurs in organisms when there is a condition of insufficient oxygen and in some microorganisms. Okay? It occurs in some microorganisms and when a body or a plant, animal's body cannot take in as much oxygen then anaerobic respiration happens. Glucose is broken down completely in aerobic respiration, but in anaerobic respiration, glucose is broken down partially. Since it's broken down partially, the energy release is less, and since the glucose is broken down completely, energy release is more. Okay? In aerobic respiration, presence of oxygen, glucose is broken down completely, energy release is more. In anaerobic re respiration, absence of oxygen, food is broken down, glucose is broken down partially, okay, and the energy release is less. Now, respiration in plants. We talked about respiration in humans, okay. What we just studied was respiration in humans. Now, let's look at respiration in plants. What really happens in plants? Uh, respiration occurs in a similar fashion. Okay, they take in the oxygen and they release carbon dioxide. Okay, they do this. The process happens through stomata. Okay, the leaf of most plants have tiny pores called stomata, mostly on the underside. Guard cells on either side of the stomata regulate their opening and closing. Okay, and we have discussed both of these. Okay, and guard cells look like. Uh, your kidney beans, your asthma beans, okay, so they close up and they open and they regulate how much air or how much oxygen or carbon dioxide is released or inhaled or taken, okay. Lenticels are uh, tiny openings on the body of the plant, okay, found on the barks of trees or stems and roots of plants. There are tiny openings. Diffusion. Diffusion is a process of gases exchange through the surface of leaves, stems of herbaceous plants. Herbaceous plants are basically uh, grasses, small plants. Okay, small plants. That's like herbs. You know, grasses that you see in the ground, you know, which don't have a fixed strong body like uh, they don't have stems strong stems, they don't have uh, trunks, they don't have barks, they're very small plants, okay, mostly grasses and shrubs, small ones, bushes, basically. So, what's the difference between photosynthesis and respiration? Again, this table, you'll find it in your book, please copy it, this is very, very important. Okay, now, let's look at it. The first point, it is one of the characteristic features of living things. Photosynthesis, it's a green plants use this process to prepare their own food. Uh, respiration is very important for needing all the living things. Okay, we need this to survive. We need to respire to survive. We need to take in the oxygen because it needs 
to be there when the food is broken down so that we can get energy. Okay? And photosynthesis is very important. Why? Because it helps plants create food. The food that we require for respiration comes from here. In respiration, it takes place in the cells of plants, animals, human beings and microorganisms. Micro it takes place, photosynthesis, takes place in the cells of plants that contain chlorophyll. Okay, there are plants which don't have chlorophyll. Next one. Oxygen is absorbed to break down the complex food that is consumed. So we eat, we eat food, like for example burger. Okay? We eat burger. Do you think that small pieces of burger goes to different part of our body and we take the nutrients from there? No. It's a chemical process that happens in our body. It goes inside the stomach. We have a hydrochloric acid in the stomach and it consumes the food okay and just uh, and releases the nutrients and the excess material excess material comes out from a body through excretion and the nutrients is absorbed by the body okay and photosynthesis oxygen is released during the process okay in respiration oxygen is taken in in photosynthesis oxygen is taken out in respiration carbon dioxide is uh, carbon carbon dioxide is released but in photosynthesis carbon dioxide is taken in by plants okay in respiration energy is obtained through the breakdown of the consumed food photosynthesis food is made by absorbing the energy from sunlight okay photosynthesis in the presence of sunlight that is by taking in the energy from sunlight food is produced in respiration the food is consumed broken down and energy is released and that's all that you need to know about the chapter if you have any question regarding this chapter please contact me i'll be sending you the notes thank you for watching